So uh, should I call it to order first? And then you'll read your uh, thing, Andy? Yes. Okay, call the meeting to order. And then you, um... oh, you're good, we're, we're all set. Okay, we had it. All right. Oh, and you can go through all the items. Okay, we'll, we'll item to, five. So we'll do the Pledge about. of Allegiance? Yep. One more time. I've never said that before. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call. Commissioner Lee. Present. Commissioner Martos. Here. Commissioner Ng. Here. Vice Chair Rebellos. Here. And uh, we'll move to uh, approval of minutes. Do we have minutes? I don't think we have minutes. We did not have minutes. Yeah. We'll have them for the December meeting. Okay. All right. So, uh, I thought you were supposed to read the little thing. Oh no, you get to read that, but I, I can... uh, the, the thing at the top, members of the public. Okay. So members of the public may comment on any action or study item appearing on the agenda at the time that it is called. Comments on other items should be made under agenda item number five. Provision of identifying information is optional, but assists in but assists in the preparation of the minutes. All votes are unanimous unless separately voted for the record. Oh, this one. Yeah. All right. Members of the public may speak on any item, not on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to suggest an item for a future commission agenda may do so during the public comment period. The Ralph M. Brown Act, the state local agency open meeting law, prohibits the commission from acting on any matter that is not on the agenda. Speakers are requested to fill out or fill out a request to speak card <clears throat> card located on the table by the door and hand it to staff. The provision of a name, address, or other identifying information is optional. Speakers are limited to three minutes each. The commission chair may adjust the time limit in light of the number of anticipated speakers. And so now let's uh, move to public comments, non agenda through the vice chair. And I'd like to comment or add that there are two ways to come in tonight's meeting. Uh, if you're online and watching it at home or on, or on TV, uh, you may send an email to public comment at burlingame.org. And the only other way is if you're in the audience, uh, come up to the dais again as you fill out the card. Uh, we no longer have the option to uh, have folks uh, online uh, uh, turn on or unmute them and allow them to speak. So that's been, uh, we've, we've, there's been some instance. So we've gone away from that. Understood. Okay. So let's move on to agenda item number five. Pub oh. oh, do we have any public comments? Well, that's what I was going to say. Oh. Item number five, public comments, non agenda, non agenda <laughs> comments on the please. And we'll do uh, three minutes. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Uh, thank you again for another year of service. I know, um, especially now that meetings are uh, in person, it's a, it's a little colder. Might be raining in a couple of couple couple of weeks. It's a little bit more difficult to try to fulfill your duties as commissioners. And I thank you and I admire your dedication to doing that. I, I had two uh, questions. One um, about two different projects. One is that. Uh, a couple of months ago, I think it was September, you had a stop sign um, on your agenda for Hillside and Bernal. Um, that was, I think, September 14th. Um, and the stop sign's already out there. It took less than two months to get the stop signs out there, which is great. Um, but I'm here to ask you about the stop signs that you as a commission approved in July 2022 the stop sign in uh, at Carmelita and Paloma as part of the Bicycle Boulevard project. Um, I've asked about that before. I asked uh, Chair Israel it, uh, when she was here uh, and she referred me to Mr. Wong, uh, was asking like, what is, what is the schedule for that? Because I know it's tied to the Bike Boulevard project, um, 
but it's also needed by that neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of middle school kids that are there. Um, and, you know, the Easton stop sign went in less than two weeks. The Carmelita and Paloma stop sign um, probably should have gone in less than a year. And it was the the, the hillside uh, stop signs were done in house. I don't think this was done by a contractor. I think it was done by our uh, diligent uh, yard folk. So I urge you again to please, since you already approved it and council already approved it, please proceed and put in that stop sign and help the kids get across that street. Um, the second question I had was uh, another project that doesn't seem to show up on the agenda anymore is the signal at Oak Grove and Caroline. Um, that's a pretty big project. I think it's a million dollar project or something like that. So I just I just don't want um, a surprise that suddenly the project that's been uh, below the radar for a year suddenly shows up on your agenda, or suddenly shows up on the council's agenda and it's either a thumbs up or thumbs down. I know you, you as a commission already provided comments to that. So I'm just looking forward to some sort of update for where that project is at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on agenda? All righty. So we'll move to item number six, discussion and action items. Uh, item 6A is discussion, I'm sorry, Broadway Business Corridor Pedestrian Improvement Update. All right. I believe that's you, Andy. Yep. Thank you, Vice Chair. Go ahead. All right. So, um, staff's taken a review. Um, there have been some uh, recent collisions on Long Broadway, and we uh, went out, took a review of it. Uh, working uh, rather than look at the one, there's one particular location that's been uh, it seems to be troubling. We looked at the entire, took this opportunity to look at the entire corridor, and just to give you a little uh, background of like how, before I show you what we actually did or have a, or proposing, we we took a review, we drafted some proposed plans, and we wanted to meet with the uh, downtown or sorry the Berlin Broadway business improvement district folks and kind of run past them because there's some changes that'll happen there that uh, will affect them. Um, but it, it's important to do in this particular case because it's uh, trying to enhance the safety, pedestrian safety aspects out there. So what we have out there now uh, to the left right here is El Camino, all the way to the right is California. Both of those are signalized intersections, which is just trying to indicate. At Paloma and Broadway, we have the flashing beacons. One set actually is probably, I think, our first set there. And then at uh, Chula Vista and Broadway, we've got the uh, pedestrian signage along with the, uh, what we call, I like to call the pedestrian paddle that's in the middle of the roadway. <clears throat> what we'd like to do, and what we're proposing is at the intersections of Cappuccino and Broadway, as well as Laguna and Broadway, uh, enhance those uh, with, again, the same similar treatment that's uh, as a first phase, enhance those, uh, similar to what's at Cappuccino, more si pedestrian signage, the paddles uh, on the road, uh, on the uh, center line. So, and here, here's why. We take a look at Broadway Cappuccino. If you look previously, oh, this doesn't do it, but um, there are no, it's lacking in some of the pedestrian signage we typically see. And, but the reason for that is, um, and this has gone through the history of it. Broadway's had some other issues. People, there were several one-way streets in that corridor. People may be turning, people illegally hanging U-turns in the business district. So uh, in response to some of those, these signs have gone up, as well as if you look down here, uh, trying to locate folks to where some of the parking facilities are. So that's been some of the trade-offs that we've had for our signage. So some of those we're pulling down just to focus on put the emphasis back on pedestrian at these crossings. In addition, and this is something we worked through, the uh, trees. So uh, right now, this is a picture probably in the winter or fall that these are, are the leaves aren't there. They're not covering up. There's not blocking, they're not creating shade. But when those tr leaves there are on the trees, they're, they're creating some issues. So originally we were, and we still may do this, but 
uh, some of those tree removals in those bulb outs, not the entire corridor, just at the bulb out. Um, here at Cappuccino, you can see where we're losing, some, where I've got an X here as a tree. Some of these are the signs and these are the proposed signs that would go there. Broadway and Paloma, obviously we have the uh, flashing beacon there. So it's a little minimal here. It's some of the trees get trimmed back or removed as well as uh, some of these signs removed just so nothing's blocking the existing pedestrian signs. Uh, here at Laguna, similar type, we've got a lot of parking signs, uh, turn restriction signs, replace those with pedestrian signs as well as the uh, ones here. The, the pedestrian paddles tend to slow down some of the vehicles because it, it, it breaks up that roadway. You're not gonna be able to ride that center line. You're gonna have to stay off of it. So again, same type of treatments here we've got trees here that are really close to some of the signs, but in order to enhance these signs when they're in, uh, these something has to be done. So first cut is gonna to be to trim the heck out of those and followed by if they're still blocking it, uh, removal. So the Broadway Business Improvement District, they are aware that that may be a possibility, but the first cut and going back to it was, okay, we won't be as aggressive. We'll keep some of it there trying to keep it, but if, if any of it's an issue, we'll have to go through it because I believe this is the uh, second time those trees have been, uh, have been worked on. Initially, the trees were creating a problem. They were all removed and then replaced with these, but um, obviously some of it still continues. And lastly, again, Chula Vista Broadway, we have some of these signs, but some signs are blocking, so enhance it, add some signs on back of some of the existing signs so we have it a place, especially at this location, because there's only the one crosswalk, <laughs> not. Uh, two crosswalks that we have on Cappuccino and Paloma. And yeah, just sign removal, clean up the signs. So any, when you see it there, it's really pedestrian focus. So ultimately, um, just to be consistent with what's at Cappuccino, I'm sorry, at uh, Broadway and Paloma, uh, enhance all the uh, other uncontrolled, sorry, un yeah, uncontrolled crosswalk with the flashing beacons mm. along that corridor. Uh, again, we provide input or uh, prevent, present this to the Broadway Business Improvement District. They wanted to, again, the feedback was try to save those trees. They supported this as an interim uh, improvement as ultimately I think what they desired was having flashing beacons there. Uh, but uh, that's definitely a much costlier. I mean, I think we estimated the, to replace them all somewhere around over $100,000, which we hadn't budgeted for. So currently that's what we're talking about, how to maybe we'll try to get one in, but we're trying to figure out the best way as well as uh, uh, they provided some other funding options and we were following through with some of those. It was contacting the uh, county supervisor. They might have some discretionary funds to be able to do some of that. So we're working with them to see if it's eligible for some of that. Uh, appreciate Mr. Kavarian's efforts on that, but that's uh, he dialed up some folks and got some oops, some traction on that. And yeah, we'll follow up with grants, but we'll we'll see what we can do to get something at uh, Laguna and Broadway. That's probably the the focal point. And then if we have to, we'll do that one first and possibly a, a flat or a RFB, and then the others we'll put signage on and then swap those out as funding becomes. So uh, with that. Happy to take any questions. Okay. So I think um, we'll start off with questions to a show of hands. Does everyone have questions or should I just, uh, uh, looks like everyone's gonna have questions, okay. And I just wanna also, before we go to questions, I just wanna say, I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Kubranian and the BID for their participation and their efforts. Um, why don't I just go, I'll go right, left, and then last, and then I'll go last. So, John, Ms. Chair, sure. Ms. Park, Commissioner Moore. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Questions on uh, Mr. Wong, I, I walked the street last night, and I looked at all these intersections and all the proposals. Uh, it was uh, interesting to walk at night. Um, I think that's probably the most risky time to be walking it, although when I walked it, there weren't a lot of cars. But there were a um, couple things one in particular, uh, I think it might have been a mistake, but when you X'd out 
the no right turn sign. I think that was probably a mistake. Uh, everything else I saw in here, you X'd out the no U-turn. So if you look at Broadway and Laguna, um, you it looks like you're going to remove that no right turn, which um, probably should... There should be some indication there that you can't turn right on that street. Um, and I think in front of that, if you go across Laguna, you see a no U-turn. You probably want to take that one out if you're in uniform up and down the street, taking all those no U-turns, but it depends on the location of the signage. So that that was, yeah, uh, kind of a question comment. Did you mean to do that? <laughs> Through the vice chair? Yeah. Um, it, it was intentional to oh. remove some of those because if you, that's a little tougher to see, but in um, right over here, there are one way signs. Are you pointing? So that was taken account. So the, the no oh, gotcha. sign. Okay. Redundant, so to speak. Okay. All right. Well, you know best. Um, I just uh, want to make sure that people don't think they can turn right there and it's pretty intuitively obvious to them. Um, and are you planning on, if we put in the um, flashing beacons to also install the um, the median, pedestrian medians as well? The, the you know, little and signage in the middle of the road? We could be uh, we're we're open to that one. Obviously, Loma doesn't have the uh, median uh, uh, paddle pedestrian paddle, but if if it continues to be uh, supported by you know, if it's not creating too many issues. We can continue. I know the one at uh, um, down near Chula Vista does get hit from the trucks coming out of Walgreens a delivery vehicle. So when we uh, replace that one, we've uh, offset it a little more to try to account for that, but. Yeah, and that was something we did discuss with the uh, DBIT, and they consider even offsetting it a little bit more to the point where it may some of the, some of these areas we have the angled parking, and they're considered pushing it out more. But they weren't as concerned, and I know a lot of the vehicles these days do have backup cameras, but we'll, we'll play with that one again. It's a it's a sign that not that I want folks to hit it, but it does flex a little bit and if it gets hit it it bounces up so okay and before you pull the trees uh, i i heard you say you're gonna trim them back um and i think once we have those flashing beacons in there you'll see exactly what needs to be trimmed <laughs> back right um who is there somebody on the d on the b bid that's going to be part of that um discussion on which trees get taken out i mean how does that decision get made because as i looked there were several trees i didn't think were going to be in the way of um some of the sign that could probably stay you know and so um i know those people on broadway business district have a vested interest and they uh you know uh, approve or at least have a say in which trees get removed and for good reason um, so who's part of that decision-making? So, uh, you know, just having discussed with them that that's the, if the signs or I'm sorry, if the trees, the foliage is blocking a, yeah. that tree, if we can't do any more, we'll work with the city arborist who's actually gone out there and they've done some trimming, okay. but we will work. But, and again, if we have to remove it, uh, it's, it's to enhance pedestrian safety. Yeah. They know it. And then, uh, but our first cut is literally to cut as many trim those trees as much as we can, raise the canopies, do whatever we can. And if we have to, they understand, yeah, we will have to remove that tree. There won't be much input in that. I mean, I understand understood. they want to preserve it, but. Yeah, no, understood. And then you're absolutely right. There were some trees that really did block those signs that are out there. So I understand that. Okay. Well, those are the only questions I have, Chair. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Ng. So, I mean, I have this alert question as a commissioner marto so as far as the one-way street sites and so i think that's kind of problematic to remove them particularly from the near side of the street versus the far because if your attention is already going to be taken by the pedestrian signs you're not going to look across the street looking for the small one-way sign and i think within this district it's also much tougher because you can't really see that far on each street to see directly where the cars are parked and which way they're going so 
I think you might want to revisit that notion, um, or at least maybe bring a smaller sign up front so at least you can see it before entering an intersection which way you should be going versus where you're actually going. Uh, through the vice, yeah. Well, maybe we can see if there's other options. Maybe, um, maybe a pavement legend, which is not uh, uh, not a legend, a uh, pavement symbol, something. We we can we can take a look at that. I understand your concern, but again, it's you know these signs when you go out there, it, 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 it's it's like walking down Broadway in San Francisco with all the marquees. There's a lot of uh, different stuff up there, so we're just trying to simplify it, right? Yeah, I would say like the no U-turn ones, I think those could probably go. I mean, yeah. I don't think anyone's really going to be but again, at a U-turn in that small of a street. So that's kind of self. In addition to the multitude of signs, it's signs blocking another sign. That's yeah. a big one. That's the tougher one. So appreciate it. Thanks. That's all right. Commissioner Lee. Thank you. And like Commissioner Martos, I walked it this afternoon. So um, first I drove it and then I walked it. So up and down. Um, almost saw two women like get clipped at uh what is that one hello my on broadway the car uh, the big what is that called pickup truck like uh kind of was really close to them they they had a jump so that was but <laughs> i chatted with them about it um anyway so looking at broadway i'm just going to go from west to east uh, Broadway Cappuccino, I was really glad to see that the Broadway Business District also wanted to spare the trees. Um, there might be one or two that need to come out, but I, I agree with you, Mr. Wong, that trimming, particularly on the street side of the tree, if we just cut a couple other branches, that would help with a lot of them. And it, a lot of the visibility was signage. And it, it, it seemed to me every tree on the southeast corner was not in the way of each of the streets um, as far as the pedestrian view or signage visibility. So the Southeast corners seemed uh, fine for the trees. Then I'm looking at the sign again, the page with the Broadway cappuccino. Are those signs gonna be yellow or are they going to be fluorescent green or the fluorescent pink? Or are we gonna change the colors of the sign to make them more no. in your face? Oh, did you want me to answer? Yeah, please. Yeah, for that one, we'll, we'll, again, th these are the snap photos or whatever I pulled off. They will be the more current fluorescent green. Okay, thank you. Um, and then, like, look, if you can, look at the Broadway cappuccino photos. As you see, where the two crosswalks meet near the curb, it, it doesn't look like a, a large area that's only gray. But the crosswalks are, that's actually a big gray zone. Like, um, they're talking here. Yeah. Where the, the, could they be painted to meet? I mean, some of them here, I mean, it doesn't look that big, but in person, and I took photos today, some of them, it's a, a 10 foot by 10 foot area that has no crosswalk stripes because of the angle of the crosswalks. If we could perhaps fill in some of those larger gaps, that'd be great. Um, at where the crosswalks meet at the corners. Then the other thing, if we look down, we're, ha we're looking west here on Broadway, would it be possible to add like a lane line on the right-hand side near the uh, diagonal parkers to maybe an 11 foot lane so that the cars feel more squeezed so they have to go slower and it might also discourage these really large pickup trucks that do park and their back end sticks out into the roadway. Um, I don't know if there's a length limit on vehicles parking on Broadway, but I've had it where I've had to go into the opposing lane to go around some of the rear ends of um, long vehicles. So I was thinking maybe a lane line would be helpful um, on both sides. And then down to Paloma. Let me just look at my Paloma notes. That's fine. Could we turn to the next page, please? Are you able to do that, Sharon? Thank you. So, um, so Broadway Laguna, if you look down at the crosswalks, they really do end far. 
And I was surprised that there weren't already more signs there. Um, and I could, do we happen to know, because this is our number one pedestrian hit intersection, at least lately, do we happen to know from what direction these pedestrians were being hit? Was it a left turner? Do we know how it was? Like, do we happen to know what the situation was when they were being hit? I think there were five lately, right? There were, I think, actually three or four. One was like a backing up. Uh, from what I recall, there, there's not one particular, it's not happening one direction. It could be going, vehicles going southbound, making a left turn, vehicles going northbound, making a left turn on the Broadway. So it, it is more of the left turn movement. Okay. Uh, but it's not from any particular direction. Okay. So just, just one thing was to increase the painting on the crosswalks to actually hit the curb. And then the other thing was, you know, those paddles, is it possible to have the paddle three feet in from the crosswalk so that if the paddle is whacked down, it's not like a trip hazard in the crosswalk. Could we just set it offset it like three feet outside the crosswalk? <clears throat> because they appear to be about three feet tall. So if it was like knocked down by a left turner, let's say, that it wouldn't impede pedestrian travel in the crosswalk. Just an idea. Um, and then if you look at the Broadway Laguna, can you see the car by Roca's there? Roca's is that red and orange? The, the, right yes, thank you. So I stood out in the street when it was clear and looked forward and the parklet does seem to impede your vision as you're approaching that crosswalk. Is there some way to add a sign on the corner of the of that parklet, like pedestrians ahead or paint signage on the floor, you know, slow pedest ped crossing on the ground? Because it is hard to see around that Roca's parklet. To me, that was tough. A driving and when I stood out there and walked. Um, you had to go pretty far out into the intersection to see. So something there special by the Rocas would be great. Um, and then, then what is this? Is this um, the straight? This is still Laguna. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then can we just go to the last slide? Uh, I think that's Walgreens, Chula Vista. Yeah, I think. Those look great and um, just make pedestrians more visible and watch the trees. So I guess those are my, oh, the last thing I guess was, are we, would we be able to take advantage of AB 43 in this business district to lower the speed limit to 20 instead of 25? I know they've done it in other downtowns. Would we be able to consider that? For sure, we, we could consider it, but uh, just looking at our data, uh, we haven't found speeding has been well especially for these collisions it's been just folks not assigning the right of way to pedestrians making the turn and not seeing it we haven't i mean again uh to address a couple of the other things uh, it's tough to put a lane line on here because of the angled parking that's mm -hmm. a little unusual you're trapping it and broadway is pretty darn narrow already yes that uh and you know the, the truck that sticks out the mm -hmm. big truck um that that kind of slows down speeds itself. Um, we are trying to offset some of those head paddles off, like for the very reasons, because left turns, some of the trucks, but again, they're meant to uh, get hit, bounce and come back up. When they're down, that's usually the, the life of it's gone. So <laughs> we, much to chagrin of our, uh, courtyard staff, we go out and replace it. You now, sometimes they, they keep counts of how many some, how many times some of these have been replaced because of certain incidents. But uh, they are effective, especially I mean in this in the city hall area. You know, just having those out there, we right. notice it. But uh, the parklet uh, question, yeah, I that's going to be revisited by council soon. Yeah, uh, that parklet does stick up. Um, it, it's far enough away. We've had some concerns at other locations that we've trimmed down. And again, we're, it, it's trying to work with the business. Um, 
once we get the signage up, you won't be looking at the parklet. You should be looking at the crosswalk and then you will be seeing this ped peds ahead basically, or, you know, there's a ped crossing up ahead. So that should address that. Okay. Uh, as far as filling in the gap of the crosswalks, we can look at, but again, as you've noticed, and you commented before, the spacing, right? We either two feet of white, two feet of open. And however that pattern lies out, that's the way it is. Because then if you start getting, well, yeah, we, we'll look at it, but it, it's a little tougher when you get to the corners using the continental yeah. or piano striping. Yeah. And uh, and we'll take a look at the corner street trees um, unless or the ones on the southeast corner. But part of it is if it's not blocking one direction, you, you got to go on the other side. Is it blocking the RFB flashing in that direction or the sign? So that, that's a consideration. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh. Just the last comment sure. about extending those crosswalks. I, I just uh, went through the intersection of our new Burlingame Avenue area by the tennis courts and and there are some of those crosswalks that are extended like down into triangular <laughs> stripes and i thought oh that's exactly what we'd want so if you could look at those that'd be we'll take a look some of those are pretty <laughs> wide open up no crosswalk so thank you that was it okay thank you um so i pretty much concur with most of the thoughts questions i've heard so far so i would only uh add my support to concern about no turn signs on the one ways. I, I, I see a lot of cars going the wrong way on those streets. It's pretty typical to see. Um, I'm not so much concerned about the, I actually, I actually was on one, uh, one of the streets, I think it was Paloma and I was driving and talking hands-free on the phone to a client of mine. And I said, well, I can't believe this. The car in front of me is making a U-turn. The problem is the street's a one-way street. So, <laughs> so I'm not so much concerned about the vehicles themselves driving the wrong direction, but it's the pedestrians when, who are used to and know the area, they try to step off the curb and they only look one direction because they anticipate the car is driving the correct direction. So that's my biggest concern about the one-way streets. And then uh, the second thing is just, I, I would uh, just maybe suggest it wherever possible, uh, shark teeth ahead of the crosswalk. So cars know to stop a little further back um, instead of just pulling right up to the crosswalk to the top. Um, and I think that's it for me. So I think we're- I, I had one go back. Far. Okay. Yeah, I just, uh, I just want to clarify, Mr. Wong. I interpreted the X's on the U-turn signs only, but they're on all the turn restrictions. Is that correct? That is correct. Oh, okay. So, but through the all there's no rights, no lefts. Those are, okay, you're that was my point. proposing that those go away too. Okay, so I, I disagree with that. But yeah. through chair, we'll, we'll take another look at those to see if there's a, another an additional option. I'm not putting them, yep. not going to leave them there. But if there's another option again, uh, a pavement uh, legend or yeah, if there's a not in the bulb out or the in the vicinity of the crosswalk and and ramp, if there's a, a way we could put a sign off, we'll we'll consider it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the shark teeth aren't an option here because they're used. I believe, and I'll confirm, uh, I'll double check it, but for multi-lane, if you have, uh, say for example, I can't use California Drive, say on Truesdale, we had a crossing because there's two lanes. It's always the fear of that one person stopping and then the next lane over doesn't. So the shark teeth at an uncontrolled location such as these, but that that's where they're appropriate. And I did have one follow-up question for Commissioner Lee. I just was wondering when you witnessed the women crossing at Paloma, it being the one crosswalk that we do have the flashing beacons. Were the beacons depressed? No. Okay. Uh, that's something I've noticed at times there. Even out at uh, Facebook, we have the same thing. We have the flashing beacons and they complain. But then I've watched and, you know, nine times out of 10, literally no one's hit the button. So just, uh, just something to keep in mind. All right. Thank you. That's going to be seven. That's going to be seven A. 
No, it's seven. public comment. You haven't. No, you can go public comment. We do. Yeah. At 7A, that's public. It's a discussion item. It's a discussion item. Comment. Correct. Yeah. It, sorry. Oh, so after each of these? Yeah, it goes, to okay. public comment. It goes back to you guys. Then. All right. So, there's no, we're not making a motion, but you have final comment. Yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought it was going to be the first. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, any public comment? Please step forward. Thank you again for visiting our neighborhood. Um, I'm on Cappuccino, about six houses in from Broadway Grill. Um, it used to be a lot worse. Uh, like uh, Commissioner Martos mentioned, um, you know, walking it at night was a lot more dangerous. But now since uh, Mr. Cabranian and Mr. Victor Vuong from Public Works worked together to put in street lighting, there's a bunch of new street lights. You probably saw ornamental street lights up and down Broadway, and it really does light up the the, the intersections um, up and down. So it's it's gotten better. Um, I'll try to keep my comments as fast as I can. Um, I am against removing trees. Uh, I'm against uh, pruning trees to the point of it being disheveled or disproportionate. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. Um, I'm also against uh, removing signage like no right turn and no left turn. We have on our block, a significant problem of people going the wrong way on Cappuccino to 1200 block, yeah, either from Broadway or either from the parking lot, which is off of Broadway. I think it was lot P or lot Q. Every now and then you will see, we will see a vehicle going 20, 25 miles an hour the wrong way down our street. So if we could please um, try to keep as many of those one way and no right turn, maybe even do it at enter signs and kind of angle them so that they're, they're more visible to people turning rather than just kind of flat where they don't really see them. Um, I would encourage uh, I would encourage that. Um, I'm also against the paddle signs because, you know, Broadway is a pretty narrow street. And for us, uh, drivers that are turning left or turning right, even if you set it back 10 feet, even with my HRV, Honda Pilot, uh, Honda compact car, I can't avoid hitting that. And in fact, if you put it even 10 feet back, you will make us swing further out to be able to make a left turn, which exposes us more into the intersection into getting hit. So the one at Walgreens, every two weeks, it gets knocked down. And when it does like kind of fall flat like that, like Mr. Wong was saying, it becomes a tripping hazard if you're walking on the crosswalk. Um, if it's kind of into the roadway, then it becomes more of like an obstacle course where people have to like swim in and out. So I also don't want to burden the courtyard with more, um, you know, more maintenance issues that they already have. There's, there's already so many things that they need to do. Um, what I would like to see considered are um, the 20 mile per hour. I, I know it may not address the issues that you have, but at least it gets a nod to people that it's okay. It's okay to drive 15, 20 miles an hour in that street because otherwise they're pressured to drive 25 because that's the default speed limit but it should be okay to drive 20, 15 on that street. Um, I'd like to suggest the edge lines that was mentioned earlier, which is just kind of narrow the lanes down so that people, when they're driving through there, they feel a little bit more constrained. Um, and it has the double purpose of, if there's an extra large vehicle that's parked there, they know they're over the line and they're more likely not to park in that way and put everything else at a hazard. If I could add, if I could just have one more minute, if that's, Permissible. Um, are, are you going to be making comment? Okay, we have one more minute. It's okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I would also uh, please recommend that you add a keep clear sign for Westbound Broadway uh, at Cappuccino. There's keep clear signs on the other end of the block at Chula Vista because people queue at the signal at Broadway in California. Uh, the same thing, the same phenomenon happens when people queue up at El Camino. And so a keep clear sign there by Broadway Grill would really be helpful for us residents to be able to get out. Um, one thing you could also consider um, is to add like a louver, like a, make it so that the green light that you see at California, uh, you only see when you're like within 200 feet of the intersection. I think what, what happens to drivers is when they see a green light at California and Broadway, they know their green light is really rare, they gun it. 
Um, so if there's a way to make the green light less visible, make the red light and the yellow light visible as much as possible, they should see that. But there's no reason to see a green light two or three blocks out. And then you're basically encouraging drivers to like plow through and try to ignore the pedestrians. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any additional comments from the commissioners? I couldn't hear uh, Manito when he said something about Broadway Cappuccino. I didn't quite understand that. The keep clear. Through, 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 through the vice chair. Addition of a keep clear sign at the intersection to make sure. Oh, keep walking. clear. Okay, thank you. I didn't hear that. Thank you. Okay. I think we're good. Um. So uh, we can move on to the next item. Through the vice chair, sorry. I mean, unless there's any closing comments from uh, the rest of the commission, I think that's the last part, then you can- I asked. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I, maybe I should, I, I'm always accused so, of I'll, speaking too loudly. I'll comment. So now I'm I'll add some to comments. quietly. Uh, uh, I'll you wanna I'll, add some more sure, comments? Sure, I'll give you my opinion. Absolutely. So the, um, I already commented on the trees. I think those should be carefully looked at. Some do not interfere with the visibility of the signs where they're proposed to go. I am strongly against removing the no turn signs. Mm -hmm. uh, the U turn signs on that's fine. Um, the paddle signs. I think I agree with Mr. Velasco that those probably, if we put in the flashing beacons, probably can remove those. They're um, more trouble than I think they're worth. Um, and I do like the option of considering reducing the speed to 20 miles per hour. Was that for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me. <laughs> I can't comment on edge lines. Um, and uh, I, I don't know about the key clear. I didn't look at that, but uh, those, those first four items are things that uh, I think should be strongly considered. Okay, thank you. Any additional comments? I'll have okay. two or three. All right. I agree with um, Commissioner Martos, um, again, to look at the 20 mile per hour, because I did notice today that though the center of Broadway does go slowly, the two ends can they'll zoom up and go fast. So in front of Walgreens hit, hitting a California drive, the speed does go up um, quite a bit because people get anxious to like to, to get through the intersection. Um, and so it'd be great if we could look at the 20 mile per hour with AB 43. And I agree about keeping the no right turn, no left turn signs. If they could be less, uh, yeah, I, I just agree with keeping those. I've actually gone the wrong way down one of those streets and then turned around on the driveway. All right, thank you. Okay. No. Do we have any, uh, okay. No, emails. Okay, let's move on to item 6B, US 101, bicycle and pedestrian connectivity. Right. Through the vice chair, this was uh, your subcommittee. Mm -hmm. uh, took 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 your uh, your uh, little report and then uh, you can compile it into a, a PowerPoint just so people walk through to walk through the rest of the commissioners. So I'll just be the clicker on this one. So go ahead and start it off. Okay, just waiting for it to come up on the screen here. Thank you. Oh, let me do a share. Sorry. Share screen. There we go. Okay, so the uh, 101, uh, Highway 101 Bicycle and Pedestrian Connectivity Committee was tasked with evaluating uh, existing bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, which traverses across the 101 freeway through Burlingame. So 101 obviously goes from one end of Burlingame to the other end of Burlingame. So it's a, quite a stretch. 
there are only a handful of uh, pedestrian and bicycle crossings available that allow access from one side of the freeway to the other. So from the bay side to the uh, downtown and the Broadway business district. Uh, so we researched potential uh, new bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure. Uh, we consider and we took into consideration anticipated growth. So, for example, uh, the area along uh, Rollins Road and the Bayfront, uh, Rollins Road would be uh, a lot of new residential and multifamily residential, high density, mid to high density, and the Bayfront would probably be mostly business, uh, office, uh, entertainment, and hotel. There were three areas where uh, we focused on the um, area. Uh, well, OK, <laughs> three areas that, that we focused on. Um, potential new bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure underneath the 101 freeway, existing bicycle and pedestrian uh, infrastructure for the Air for Airport Boulevard, Broadway, and Bayshore Highway, that intersection there and existing, existing bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure near Highway 101 and Bayshore Highway. Next slide, please. So uh, on the subcommittee, uh, my colleague, uh, Commissioner Lee and I, we went in person to several of these locations and we had uh, meetings and went up, poured over the maps and, uh, and this, uh, I should have had this sectioned off with a uh, uh, a little bit differently, but I I see what's going on here. No, no, keep don't go don't go back. So um, these are identified locations. So this is particularly for new bicycle and pedestrian crossings uh, to traverse the 101, and um, the red lines are areas where we identified the potential to build either an undercrossing or an overcrossing on the 101 freeway. And then the uh, red dots that you see are um, interchanges where pedestrians and bicyclists are crossing their existing infrastructure where there's crossings near or adjacent to the 101 freeway. Next slide, please. This one here is, um, Mills Creek, which is what we uh, determined to be the best candidate for an undercrossing on the 101 freeway. So there's a creek that runs from uh, you, from Rollins Road. Uh, it's pretty wide and it has some fairly wide banks. And uh, there's enough clearance under the 101 freeway and there's banks that go under the 101 freeway. And then that creek goes all the way to, it's a uh, it's a little uh, land, uh, kind of a bird preserve. And so that where at the end there where your arrow is, just to the right of there would be like Benihana's and those kind of places. And it connects to the Bay Trail right there. So, and, and on the Rollins side, which is on the west side of the Bay Shore Freeway, the 101 Freeway, just north of the Green Line is where the uh, dense, uh, mid density and high density new multifamily uh, construction is all mostly occurring. And that goes over to the Melbray Bard station. On the right side, we're looking at the airport B Boulevard, Broadway, Bayshore Highway uh, area, which is uh, an interesting area because there's going to be a lot of new construction there. So we had the opinion, we were of the opinion that with that new construction that will be happening or proposed to be happening where Max's is, where the Holiday Inn is, uh, and some of those older office buildings, the old higher uh, theater, there would be opportunities to uh, improve the pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure right there along Bayshore Highway and that intersection with um, Broadway and uh, um, Airport Boulevard. So you see the green arrows, that's existing uh, pedestrian crossings. The uh, red arrow is for where a pedestrian who is crossed over the 101 freeway on the bicycle and pedestrian bridge overpass, which is just south of Broadway, they would have to walk 
over to where that red arrow is to get inside that park there where the athletic fields are. And um, I will talk what I would talk about. I'll talk about that later. But there, it's a it's a confusing right there because if you're a pedestrian and you don't know the area, which it took me a few walks <laughs> to realize that there was actually a sidewalk over there, you feel like you can you can't actually um, access the fields unless you cut through the um, the trees and the brush. And then the yellow arrows. So the yellow arrow, you can see uh, the one just a little bit further south there, please, Andy. Uh, right there by the bus stop. That's a that's a that's a, a Sam Trans bus stop. That's sort of uh, on an island <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. And the only way to access that is from the uh, crosswalks all the way uh, where the green line is. There are no crosswalks north of that. Mm -hmm up until you get to the Hyatt Regency, which is quite a far up, quite a far, quite a ways up. And um, so basically anyone who's working at any of those buildings across the street, uh, they would have to walk a substantial distance. That's a, a, a quite a large area. So they would have to walk a substantial distance to not jaywalk there and get over to that bus stop. Oh. And then crossing those two freeway ramps where the yellow arrow is in the middle here, that's, uh, that's a there's a there's a little island in between the two freeway ramps. The one uh, to the right of the arrow is the off ramp for the 101 uh, north onto Old Bayshore, and the one to the left is uh, for 101 north from Bayshore. And um, crossing those ramps is pretty harrowing. They're quite quite wide, and there's good reason to cross them because the uh, buildings to the north of the freeway ramp there there's uh, two or three office buildings and there's the Hyatt Regency. So you have employees uh, and, and workers that work up in there trying to get down to that bus stop. And they basically have to jaywalk across those freeway ramps unless they were going to cross over far to the north and then walk all the way down south to the green uh, crosswalk and then come back up. And then the yellow arrow directly across Bayshore from the freeway ramps is a driveway which comes out, uh, enters and exits from the Holiday Inn and from Max's. And uh, there's nothing in particularly strange about that one, but it's just uh, uh, just something to be aware of. Let's go to the next slide, please. So <clears throat> we discussed potential 101 crossings, including the following, in which I've just kind of touched on them. Mills Creek between Rollins Road and Bayshore Highway under the US 101, Morrell Avenue, and Rollins Road, uh, which overcrosses from Burlingame over to Anza Boulevard on the Bay Side, and Burlingame Avenue at the intersection with Victoria Road and Rollins Road, and that would overcross to Lang Road. That's essentially a Burlingame point where the Facebook campus is. And uh, the uh, fourth one was Easton Creek between Rollins Road and Bayshore Highway. That would also be an undercrossing under the 101. It's just a little further south of where Mills Creek is. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it was a little uh, too south. It, it's because it's getting pretty close to uh, Broadway and it kind of doesn't seem to really improve anything. Um, so we discussed those. Our recommendation was the city of Burlingame explore developing the banks of Mills Creek between Rollins Road and Bayshore Highway under the US 101 to accommodate a bike pedestrian trail. Similar infrastructure has been successfully developed in Napa County, Santa Clara County, and Los Angeles County that we're aware of, there may be more. Um, and that's our recommendation for the uh, new bicycle pedestrian infrastructure to traverse the 101. And I just wanna add that I think what's special about that Mills Creek is it's really an opportunity to connect Rollins Road to the nature preserve there, the bird, preserve and then also to restore Mills Creek to some extent yeah, because it's a beautiful creek and some parts of it along some of the commercial developments has actually been is quite nice and I think some of the proposed uh, developments already are talking about improving upon uh, the taking advantage of that the bank, banks of that creek um, yeah, and it's also, uh, it's almost dead center in between Broadway crossing 
the 101 and Millbrae Avenue crossing 101. So it would be a real uh, advantage for folks who move into that new Rollins neighborhood. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, so we observed uh, Airport Boulevard, Broadway, and Bayshore Highway, that big intersection. We were there midweek from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, there was a more bicycle and pedestrian activity than we expected. There was a consistent flow of cyclists and pedestrians at every light cycle. Cyclists uh, seemed to be the most consistently familiar with the intersection and ranged in age from what appeared to be 13 years old to middle age. Uh, most were solo cyclists. Of the bicyclists uh, that we observed, rarely did any of the observed uh, traverse the intersection. <laughs> I maybe should have edited this. Uh, none of the bicyclists uh, traverse the intersection, uh, traversing the intersection were actually obeying any traffic laws, including wearing helmets. Uh, the bicyclists who did obey traffic laws appeared to be middle-aged and would qualify as skilled cyclists. Uh, the skilled cyclists traversed the intersection from eastbound Broadway into a left turn lane onto northbound Bayshore Highway. Uh, we waited, uh, I, let's not go into the details of what he did, but the majority majority of the uh, cyclists just kind of traversed through the intersection knowingly and confidently, but not uh, obeying any of the traffic signals or following any of the uh, bike uh, routes. Uh, most cyclists um, in that area were, again, they were kind of uh, middle-aged. There were some young ones that were going to the uh, athletic fields. That was a little concerning. Some of them rode through two or three times in the time that we were observing. Um, most of them were coming uh, between Broadway and Airport Boulevard. They were going in both directions. Uh, they appeared to be locals, commuters. There were some travelers from the Crown Plaza and the Hyatt Regency. Those were pedestrians. And there were, um, that was basically it. We have, the, the one thing, that was really surprising to me, at least. I don't know, Commissioner Lee it didn't seem to be as surprised. Uh, we saw absolutely zero bicyclists utilize the overcrossing, the bridge, uh, the bike ped pedestrian bridge over the 101. Um, do you want to contribute? Because you, you had some thoughts about the signage uh, at that particular overpass, the bridge. No, oh, I didn't. That's OK. We can come back to it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, pedestrians at uh, Airport Boulevard, Broadway, and Bayshore. So these were. This was more about the pedestrians and the bicyclists. Uh, most of them appeared to be commuting to and from work, so they seemed to be people that were familiar with the intersections. There was uh, greater numbers of people, but less frequency uh, of people traversing between the Crown Plaza and the Hyatt Regency. Uh, so they probably uh, were attending conferences or business meetings. They weren't familiar, but they were traveling in big groups. So they kind of, uh, as a team, they did a good job navigating through those intersections. And uh, thirdly, were recreational walkers, which had no issues. Um, let's see, we observed two instances. Yeah, so the senior citizens definitely were having issues at this intersection because the countdown timers were really tight. Um, you basically have to walk a, at a rapid pace across the road to make it before you, uh, the uh, timer, uh, the countdown timer is completed. So uh, I think, I don't know. If... We counted it out when yeah. we walked and I barely made it. I'm a yeah. slower walker than you. And we walked it a few times. Yeah. We didn't just do it once or twice. Um, and then we observed just one pedestrian using 101 bike pedestrian bridge. Let's have the next slide, please. And I should add that the actual report is uh, formatted uh, more like a traditional report, and I'll distribute that to everybody separately through uh, staff. Um, 101, uh, so the recommendations uh, that we have for that intersection are to extend the crosswalk signal countdowns so that seniors and disabled pedestrians can make it across the road uh, safely with plenty of time. Uh, more clear and obvious directional signage to the Bay Trail, to the hotels, to the Broadway District, to Caltrain and the Bayside Park. And I know that uh, in between the time that we uh, prepared this report and uh, 
we actually presented it, there was some signage proposed by a staff for some of that uh, infrastructure. And, uh, and then additional bike infrastructure, including approved bike lane markings and bike boxes at those intersections. So th that's one thing we noticed. We saw bikes just in the middle of the lanes uh, and, and stopping in some pretty awkward positions at the traffic signals. Uh, next slide, please. So this would be uh, the, the highway ramps that I showed you on the map earlier um, at Bayshore Highway. This was also midweek from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, there Again, there was more bicycle and pedestrian activity than expected. There was a consistent flow at every uh, uh, cycle of the traffic lights. There were commuters and travelers, again, people traversing from the Crown Plaza to the Hyatt Regency and back. Mm -hmm. And so we did see some of those people crossing over the freeway ramps yeah. because they didn't want to cross over uh, Bayshore. And um, this is so this is the part I was talking about. It's a three way intersection with southbound and northbound lanes on, I call it OBH, it's uh, Old, Bay, Old, Old Bayshore Highway, highway and the 101 freeway exit. Uh, it's a three-way intersection. It's essentially a T-shaped intersection because on the one side at the top of the T, you have the driveway that goes into Max's restaurant and the Holiday Inn. And that driveway, depending on the time of the day, uh, can be busy, but it's not typically an issue. Uh, the pedestrians, again, a lot of them were commuters between the hotels, uh, workers, business people from the con conferences. Uh, most pedestrians were walking on the east side of Bayshore Highway, uh, and some of the pedestrians crossed the 101 ramps. Let's go to the next slide. Ah. Yeah. So our recommendations uh, on this uh, here is the uh, the bicycle infrastructure, particularly on southbound Bayshore Highway, is not obvious to vehicular traffic, especially to those vehicles exiting the 101 onto southbound Bayshore. And those vehicles entering the US 101 from northbound Bayshore Highway also don't have good visibility of the bicycles tra traveling in the op opposite direction southbound. Uh, the committee recommends improved bike lane markings and a bike box on southbound Bayshore Highway at the uh, in, at the uh, traffic signal there where the freeway ramps are. Mm -hmm. There is no pedestrian infrastructure at this intersection. There are no sidewalks or crosswalks. The top of the T is an active driveway. There is a Samtran stop at the southwest corner south of the US 101 ramps and north of Broadway. Uh, if one were to walk to the bus stop, they would need to walk on the road or across the free, freeway ramps. The nearest crosswalks are to the north or, of uh, Bayshore Highway or north on Bayshore Highway at the Hyatt Regency or to the south at Broadway. To legally walk from Max's restaurant across the street from the bus stop, to walk to the bus stop from Max's, we measured this out, uh, it's, uh, we, uh, it's 500 feet south on Broadway, cross Bayshore Highway, and then walk another 350 feet to the bus stop. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much no one is going to do that. Right. Um, the committee suggests studying the intersection to improve pedestrian access and directional siding. Next slide. So any questions and feedback? And then I know this uh, presentation was edited uh, as well as I, like I said, I didn't review it, so I probably would have made some changes, uh, minor changes, but a great job, Andy. Uh, it's a good trans, uh, translation of the report, and I will, through staff, we will submit that report to, to each of you. Any questions or feedback? First off, I knew with, between the two of you, this would be extremely thorough reports, <laughs> and I appreciate that because... I mean, a lot of things I think you pointed out just are very logical. Um, I think the one thing I just had a question on and less about you guys and more, that's Mr. Wong. So that area of Airport Broadway and Bayshore, is that by any chance you know, under the jurisdiction of Caltrans since it's coming off the freeway? Because I'm curious on what how much we can actually improve it. It's all, it seems like it's a state of perpetual not quite done. And I think the, yeah. you know, the things you're pointing out is kind of like, it, there should be more going on there, but it's 
it's not quite fully built yet. And I'm just curious on, is that part of the reason why? Uh, through the vice chair? Yes, actually both those these intersections on the right side, the uh, uh, northbound ramps in Old Bayshore, as well as Old Bayshore Airport Broadway, those are both, uh, those signals are both uh, uh, operated and maintained by uh, Caltrans. It's because of the connection to the, the the other one that's just off the page is are the southbound ramps. So they they have kept that. Um, we we are trying to look at you know through the uh, old Bayshore feasibility study of trying to extend improvements to uh, uh, be accommodated here, but it, it's tough to, uh, as you can and, you know it, if you look yeah. <clears throat> right here where you were talking where folks were walking there's actually there was I. I, I just looked at the picture because there's it a was, barrier here yeah. indicating you're not to cross. And then when I looked at the picture, the barrier was, was down. You could see the, uh, someone must have cut it actually, or it, it or ran into it, but I think it was more cut because it's just lying right next to it. But you, you could see little bits sticking out of the, uh, the sidewalk. So this was never meant to be, <clears throat> be crossed. I, unfortunately, the movement to get over here from here is this. And if you're over here is to go up here. Uh, again, with redevelopment out here, as well as the plan there, there's, as you saw before, there's, we're trying to create more opportunities, mid block crossings along here to make that better. But this, it's tough too, because uh, again, it's ideally most of the stuff's on this side. So folks aren't having to cross over this uh, property presents a little a bit of an issue because, it, you know, you might have folks doing, they're going to have to backtrack to go this way. So through the vice chair. Um, so with that end and knowing that Caltrans operates and maintains those intersections. So humor me. So what exactly can we do to help influence that? Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, I mean, we'll try to work with them. I mean, we can bring up some of the, some of the small improvements like bike boxes, as far as crossings, uh, we can bring it up to them, but that that's not just like, just go and stripe a crosswalk, right? Because ramps and then they have to account for it in their, their traffic signal because right now there there's no crossing and no head heads and timings fixated to cross the uh those ramps so, yeah. so it's yeah always saying it's a little longer process and especially if you involve about caltrans but we we can talk to them about some of the simpler ones that we can well does that make sense and yeah then we just have to work with them and then i guess more procedurally so now that the report's been submitted <laughs> and you know we bandy it about the staff just take a look at it and start reviewing and further discussion about what gets implemented. I guess maybe just give me a quick refresher on the process. You know, I'll work with uh, the subcommittee. I mean, there, there's some, um, we, we should go over some of it because there's, again, as much as all this is within the city of Burlingame, not all of it's under our jurisdiction, Caltrans being one, but there's also Fish and Game, there's also Army Corps, uh, and potentially on some of it, uh, yeah. JPB and and definitely Caltrans for any of the uh, overcrossings and I mean even at that point uh, there's significant funding issues. I was looking at uh, you know we're talking several million dollars for any crossing of 101. That's from design and even construction. That those numbers are probably even low. I mean it could be in the tens of millions. But yeah, so we could talk this over. No, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I would just add to to respond in part to in a, a strange ways to your comments the mills creek in particular that that bike pedestrian crossing that that's crossing at least by my count i i figured four jurisdiction yes and uh it's 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 i by no means i don't think commissioner lee or i for a minute thought well we'll just present this and next year we'll have this beautiful trail uh, I, I jokingly said to Commissioner Lee, I said, this will be named after me long after I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I, uh, I think that, uh, some of these are certainly, uh, the Mills Creek. I, one of the reasons I think that we wanted to capture all of this now is because of all the new proposed construction there and maybe the potential for private investment. Mm -hmm. So if I may, you so, come? Oh, go ahead. Um, yeah, so very 
Very well done. I, I did walk this last night after I walked Broadway. I was right there, so I figured, yeah, check this out too. Um, the the Mills Creek idea. So is that something where that the creek remains in the middle, and then you have pathways on either side? Is what what was your thought there? There was one side in particular that seemed both sides were are equally just about equally wide, and it's a it's a surprisingly wide creek uh and there's that bridge it goes under the bridge that's actually a bridge on 101 right there yeah. and the private businesses at, at one point on, on one of these there's actually a private bridge that crosses and there it's now i don't know how much is public right away on either side of that how much of that is private land yeah. and if i recall also i think it's I think it's the one on the at the at the west end of it. One of those is uh, already under construction. There's a new development going in there. One of it's I can't remember if it's at the right or left side of it, the, the creek, but it's one of those right there. And um, there are parts if you especially if you go back into those uh, industrial parks, some of it maybe is not even sanctioned or, or you know permitted, but some people have taken advantage of the creek back there. And then it it's it really it really empties out nicely with the uh, preserve right there. Right, right. Yeah, I looked at it on both sides. I looked at it on Rollins uh, by American Medical Response right there, where the entrance point would be, and then I looked at it over at Benihana. Um, but I was just wondering the connection between those two, going between those businesses and and with the creek, if you were proposing to put a pathway on one side or the other or both sides of that thing to, to make it usable. I, I don't know, Commissioner, if you can speak for yourself, but I envisioned it, the path being on one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, interesting about the, uh, I had to look for the um, bus stop on Old Bay Shore and, and I was in the parking lot at Max's and I was standing there and I'm looking across the street for the bus stop and a gentleman with a backpack looked like a worker walked by me. And then he ran across old Bay shore to the median right there. <laughs> and he waited for the cars to pass and he ran across the street and he walked over to the bus stop. I said, Oh yeah, that's a, that's dangerous. And those, there you go. That's exactly what you said. They're not going to walk up to Broadway and then back down to the bus stop. And, uh, and then I went all the way down to, I said, well, how far away is the crosswalk all the way down to the Hyatt? And I went down to the Hyatt and uh, the bike lane on southbound uh, Old Bayshore is pretty lousy. You know, that Shero is, it's, it's pretty, I wouldn't ride it. It's pretty scary. Um, so I agree with all that. And um, I think this is good work. Like Commissioner um, Ng said, I, I hope that, you know, this isn't just, Put in a file cabinet or in the circular file cabinet. I hope they'll take this into consideration, especially when they start building up the biotech park there um, and, and developing that area. Uh, a lot of good thought went into this. Last thing I was wondering, uh, the countdown timer, is there anything we can do or does Caltran, Caltrans control that uh, i mean it legitimately if it's not long enough they they, they should fix it right if a, a regular person can't get across there um, whether we own it or they own it, it it should be fixed there should be some guidelines on how much time you give people across the street um, so that was a question mr wong through the chair if that's okay yeah through the chair uh we can inquire about what's in there they they do have it's either, you know, depending on what's nearby, four, four feet per second they use or three feet per second. Yeah. And one is longer for folks that, uh, you know, uh, that, that may take to get longer. Usually those are closer to like senior facilities, but we can inquire what time is in that one for that crossing. And just to be, I mean, we'll look at them all, but just to make sure which crossing were you specifically, was it crossing Bayshore? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, crossing airport or crossing uh, uh, base. Cro crossing airport. Okay. Yeah.
yeah, we, we can inquire with our folks over at Caltrans. Oh, and then the last thing. <laughs> yeah, I know that little that little red arrow there to get to Bayside Park. It'd be nice if there was a little path that went down the side of the mountain there at the corner instead of having to go around that corner. Yeah, I, I, I think people have already worn a path there. But if if we could actually pave something there, I don't know what that would take, but that would that would make it a lot nicer as well as people come off of that that bridge, that pedestrian bridge, um, mm -hmm. to have the path connect to Bayside. It'd be real helpful, I think, to people. So something else to consider, and and that should be within our jurisdiction, right, Mr. Yeah. Wong, through the chair. Correct through chair. Uh, okay. But I, I believe that had to be there was because of the slopes yeah. and making a, yeah, make it ADA compliant. Whereas if yeah. you have that, if you try to go just a straight shot, yeah. you're going to have to ramp down yeah. fast. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had. Good job. Thank really you. good job. Thank you. I, I would just, so back to that red arrow, that's actually, I'm glad you brought it up because it reminded me that was actually one of the key uh, corners where we thought the signage needs to be improved because frankly, and I told this to you mm -hmm. several times when we were looking at that intersection, I walked to that area for months before I realized there was a sidewalk there. And actually it took me a while to also realize uh, when I first started walking down there that when you first cross over, if you wanna go along the Bay, along um, Airport Boulevard down towards uh, Facebook, you actually have to cross at that green crosswalk there because that sidewalk just ends and all of a sudden you're walking in the middle of airport boulevard yeah you're not aware of it <laughs> yeah you're not aware of it yeah so uh that's that's that intersection right there really should have some be better uh pedestrian uh guidance mm -hmm. uh commissioner lee it's your turn yes uh thank you vice chair <clears throat> so i agree the signage there at the corner where the red hooked arrow it, but the signage is, we want is for pedestrians and bikes, not for automobiles. So it'd be more user friendly toward pet and bikes that like to access Bay Trail, please cross here, something like that. Um, and then going back to Commissioner Martos's comment, because I did walk down that little hill by that red hooked arrow, like unless you needed an ADA compliant path, you do just walk down the dirt. And because there is already an ADA compliant way to go, if we just paved 20 more feet of that steeper hill, it'd be great instead of walking in the dirt, like, like we did, like I did. Um, going back to the yellow arrow at the freeway entrance, I know it's Caltrans controlled. Um, I also have seen tourists, um, actually some stopped me, not when we walked another time, um, some French tourists wanting to get to Broadway. They had done the run across, stop at that little center island, and then do another run for your life across the freeway entrance there. And it is a signalized intersection, so it seems like it wouldn't be that difficult to have a pedestrian uh, button there and to ask Caltrans for it, because it is signaled, which would be great. Not that many people go, but better than run for your life over there. Um, signage. Signage also for pedestrians so that they realize that there is an overpass. Um, and that would be walking southbound on the east side of the street for them to realize, like, go this way to go to the overpass. That would be helpful. But it have to be charming, like pedestrian signs, not meant for the roadway people. Um, then going back to the Mills Creek, um, I'm more familiar with how they did it in Napa, which was not under a freeway, but it was under roadways. And it was the Army Corps of Engineers and the Fish and Game worked with the city to have their floodway go underneath the roadways as this would be. And what Napa did was they put in giant gates. Pathway would be closed should there ever be a 50 year or a hundred year flood. They would close it off if the creek or something was flooding. 
and it works extremely well and super popular. And it'd be great if we could have that ease of access and whatever way fish and game would want the path. I believe it only has to be 10 feet wide and 10 feet tall to, to be legal, at least for peds and bikes to get underneath there, but it'd be wonderful for us. Um, and then here's a question, Mr. Wong, for you. I believe there is a bicycle lane southbound on Bayshore Highway um, approaching, what is that Broadway intersection? But I believe the bike lane is in the far right-hand area as it approaches, but there's a double right turn lane in front of it for people to turn right or westbound on Broadway. Um, and I'm wondering, because if those bicyclists wanted to actually go to the overpass, should the bike lane be on the left side of the right turn lanes so that they could continue straight should they choose to go to the overpass? Because I believe it's on the far right-hand side. So if you as a bicyclist are going southbound on Old Bay Shore, and the light turns green, you have two right-hand turn lanes coming at you if you wanted to go straight. Am I picturing that correctly? Can we see it? Let's see if we can. But should the bike lane be between the straight ahead lane and the two right-hand turn lanes um, instead of where it is if for bicyclists to want to use the overpass entrance. Understood. Uh, yeah. It would be where it's at. Ideally, we I mean, when you mentioned, made the comment of having a bike box, if you're trying to access, because I actually ride that and I'll make my way after crossing, uh, going southbound uh, Old Bay Shore. Okay. I will start my way getting into the uh, the left turn lane, making sure it's clear behind me. I'll get in there and then wait there for in order for the, uh, the loop to detect me and then go over uh oh. broadway but uh, a bike box would be ideal there but if you sandwich the bike lane there um you, if you have someone i mean you you want them to be able to make the right because that's the ideal movement but to go straight you have to bring the bike lane across two uh southbound right turn lanes yeah and that's yeah i mean if you look at it how we did a uh, carolyn we we go the other way where we bring you over we, we we get you over before the right turn lane begins uh, and, and slide you over to the far, right? So you can, ideally, you should be able to go straight during a signal, but the, the car should be yielding. But uh, yeah. the bike box would be, yeah, I, I think the bike box is a, a better solution. So we'll inquire about that as well, if they can strike. Okay, it. yeah, because I thought it looked funky. Not that I would ever be brave enough to do it, but I could see that it, it looked like it would be a problem. And... Um... Sorry, is this all that was it? Details right here. Was that also in your report or no? There were no boxes in. I, 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 I'd have to. This was a, a summary. Okay. This presentation, so I'd have to actually refer back to the actual no, report. I, I just want to make sure that yeah. what you're just mentioning right now was this part of the original, more comprehensive report or not? I don't. I don't know. Was it? I think it probably was, but yeah, I, I don't know the specifics off the top of my head. Okay, any more comments or questions from? No, questions? thank you. And uh, any, there's no public comment here. Any, okay. okay. All right, so let's move to item seven, informational items. 7A, public comment related to informational item, items. Anybody? Oh, okay. okay. And item 7B, community group updates. I got nothing. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> Item 7C, engineering division reports. Thank you through the vice chair. Uh, just a couple. Uh, BIS bike improvements last, God, it just seems so long ago now, but last Thursday and Friday, we kicked it off. Uh, the first Thursday, uh, we had a significant amount of people trying to go, again, if you recall, the, uh, the, the big focus was obviously and phase one was getting pedestrians to walk on the south side of Clarice. That way they weren't, uh, they didn't have to cross uh, Sequoia. They're on that side. So, and then as they got to Casada, there's the crossing guard with the flashing beacon. The whole idea was to keep them on that side. 
So this, we had implemented that several weeks ago and the school is um, making sure folks were doing it. And so that, that's that been uh, fairly successful. The next was to make sure we can get the flow of traffic going uh, eastbound along Clarice. Uh, and so we had put in turn restriction signs on Sequoia as well as Marco Polo. Marco Polo, you would not be able to turn, make a right or left turn from Marco Polo to go towards Clarice. And if you were on Sequoia, you couldn't make a right turn to go towards the school on Clarice. So we had put those signs in and uh, and Thursday happened. Uh, we had, thanks to Burlington PD, we had plenty of parking enforcement officers out there as well as uh, uh, Sergeant Roberts himself, as well as Officer uh, Rambaugh, uh, the school liaison. So we were all out there and um, it, at times we had folks trying to come up because they weren't. I, I think they were noticed about it, but they just, just hadn't clicked yet that that was happening that day. And so we uh, we had to turn them away. And unfortunately, I had the we had brochures printed out to hand them a, a, something we had uh, shown to them on the uh, back to school night, as well as any presentations we made with the PTA. But I left it in my office. And so uh, we didn't have that. So we had to turn away a lot of people. We turned over 100 people away saying this is and so they went around. Uh, then the next day we were better equipped after learning our, a couple of lessons, we had some additional signs larger that were indicating on uh, sandwich boards, indicating no right or left turn during the school hours, enhancing the permanent signs we had in, we had the flyers. So we were able to pass them out, but a lot of folks, uh, had already kind of recalled that that happened and this was now starting. And we went from like a hundred, I believe down to like 30 that were kind of going the other way. Uh, Pete Burlingame PD, myself, and we were out there again on Friday, um, even met some of the neighbors and they were supportive of it. I mean, even though we had talked to them uh, and then Monday, um, I believe, and Sergeant Roberts may jump in, but each day they've been out there this past week as well, but each day it's been trickling down. So we went from 120 to 30 and then I, I won't give you the numbers there, but it's been progressively going down. Um and some of the things that we thought originally thought uh, we may not implement right away. And I'll let uh, Commissioner Ng talk about some of that, but it, it seems like, I mean, fairly successful. We did not have screaming people just, we had none of that. People were supportive. They were just more of like, Oh, I, I forgot. That was the biggest. So we will continue that. And again, like all the other schools, as we monitor it and we see, and especially after with the new school year, you, you, you know, compliance seems to go down. Some people are new to it and we just have to make sure we work with the school and have them send out the notices and uh, make sure the school updates their circulation plan that they have uh, each one on the uh, school website. They have a circulation plan make sure they update that to show uh, new folks if they can find it on the website, but at least we, they have the information out that circulates. So that's a long way of saying, uh, giving an update on that, but that was good work by, we finally got it going. So it, it took a while to get there, but once it got going, uh, it's been pretty good. And I did see Commissioner Ng out there on Friday with me and he caught me crossing the street, probably where I shouldn't have been, but it didn't cause any traffic. I was all right. <laughs> uh, California Drive bike, oh, sorry. Uh, any questions on the BIS from anyone? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. So the you, you're trying to get, the students to walk on the south side of Clarice. Did that crosswalk get moved on Casada? Correct. Um, so yeah. there, it's still a crosswalk. It's but an unmarked it crosswalk. Going to move back, right? We here. Let me see if I can uh, towards Clarice, or uh, I don't know where it was. Gonna, it was going to move back. I think. Yeah, we used to be on the north side of the yeah, section now. Right. Side. It, it was moved. It, it was moved. Sorry. Great. Okay, great. That's it. Yeah, so it's still a, it's still a crosswalk. We don't have a barrier saying can't cross here. It's just but it's on the south side of that <coughs> intersection. Which, Correct. Okay. Now, that, that's a big deal. It has the high That's a bigger improvement. Crosswalk. Okay. Um, should I just comment now? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, again, you know, I want to say thank you to Mr. Wong and, and particularly to, to Sergeant Roberts and, and the BPD because it you know, when I when I went there on Friday morning, it was being very well handled, well communicated, and again, I think to the point is I think everyone's looking for some new structure and creation of it. So I think people are you know mostly appropriately uh, towing the line. 
a, a couple of observations. So, you know, one of the things that uh, Mr. Wong inferred was, you know, originally when you're coming out of the traffic circle at BIS, the only way you were supposed to go is just down Clarice. Um, and also if you're approaching southbound on Casada, same thing, you'd have to go down Clarice. And so uh, Principal Land's comment was before this began was, well, we don't want to necessarily do that. We want to be able to reduce any kind of traffic congestion in the circle or down that way and not just stack up behind Clarice, but also just let them go back to the neighborhood. Chair Israel and I both fairly against initially, but when we saw it play out in practice, it ended up working just fine. And so you really didn't have too much of a glut of cars going back into the neighborhood down Casada. Uh, and the, the bigger issue that we had was towards, towards Davis. Yes. And so the bigger issue that we had before also was that now that you're funding all the students to cross that crosswalk right there, how is that going to be when you have cars going through it? And so what ended up happening is that once you have the control crosswalk there with the crossing guard, people just naturally started going down Clarice because they just didn't want to wait anyway. So it sort of solved itself. And so, you know, one thing that I would say is that maybe we do want to hold off on creating that restriction permanent as originally intended. And maybe it's something that we can consider kind of going with what we have right now. Um, two other things that I want to, uh, observations was that no one's using the bus lane when the buses aren't there to drop people off. And so everyone's still going into the circle, which creates the congestion there as well. So, you know, I think we talked about, you know, re restripe or repainting the curb there or making it a little bit more visible that, you know, you're, it's a loading zone, but it's still going to be a Sam Trans area as well. And I mean, this in the morning, the Sam Trans bus, it's only, it's one way, right? Everyone's just getting off the bus. So it's out in 30 seconds. It's really, really fast. So the time it'll take for anyone to drop off, the, you know, their kid, probably gonna be pretty quick as well. So even if the bus is waiting, it's not gonna be waiting that long. And if cars are waiting behind the bus, they're not gonna wait that long either. So I think that we need to find a way to encourage more usage of that so that not everyone's going into the traffic circle at the school and then getting kind of clogged up there. Um, and the last thing, and I think my apologies because I've been out of town the last couple of days for work, but um, the signage on Marco Polo for no left turn onto Clarice because it was the more temporary kind of lower sign I found it kind of hard to see. Um, just if you're going down the street, it's harder to notice. And I think that's why you're still, you were going to have some until you have a few days of correction. But, you know, of course, where I start fearing is that once BPD is not there policing the situation anymore, then are people still going to recognize that or not? So um, I think we won't know unless we kind of go out there probably in the next week or two and then even towards the end of the year and the rest of the school year and just make some observations there. So, I mean, not necessarily immediate action, but something we probably want to, uh, just keep it keeping our eye on that was it though but i think overall i think it's a great start and uh, we'll see how it goes okay yes, really? uh yes just a couple of questions um i did not go out and look at it myself but i heard that davis drive now has lots of extra vehicles on it because of the one-way traffic flow that's being implemented and so if i recall davis drive was also to be considered as a bike boulevard so now that it has lots more motor vehicle traffic i'm wondering are we able to come up with a plan b maybe do a different bike boulevard or see if we can reroute some of the motor vehicles off of davis further away so that the bike boulevard is uh, safer for the middle school students and the I know there's an elementary school there too. Lincoln. Um, Lincoln, thank you. Um, and then I did see photos of the, I'll call it a bike garage, of the bikes corral at, there's two of them, I guess, at at um, BIS. And there were tens and tens and tens of bikes. So many kids ride their bike there. So I was really impressed by that. Um, some of them are those fast electric bikes, but a lot of them are just the push pedal bikes. And I believe there's an um, an issue at Davis and Casada because the especially the pedal pedaling bikes, the kids go down and then have to go back up, and so they tend to not want to stop at that stop sign because they're going down, but then they have to get back up. I was hoping I don't know how we could address it, but there's an issue with the actual landscape that the kids don't want to have to stop at whatever's there because of pedaling having pedaled to get back up and um i was wondering if the circulation plan that was passed out to the students or the parents if it 
if it did include a circulation plan for bicycles of how they should approach the school or will that come out in the future? Through the vice chair, yeah, we we did not have a circulation plan or for the bicycles, but again, the bike boulevard, once that's been established on Davis, uh, again, the bike boulevard, it, it's a combination. It's, it's to put a facility on there, but we can't have a class two because it's too narrow. So hence we go to bike boulevard, but it's also to slow down. It's not, I mean, vehicles will drive it as you will, but we put things there, whether it be speed cushions, narrowing the road, just to get vehicles to go slower. It, it's still a share of the road. Uh, but it's, we can't really do anything about the topography of the road there. I mean, the hill, I mean, short of, yeah, redeveloping the entire area, which we're not. So, uh, but the, uh, BIS or the, uh, uh, Burlingame school district, they are talking about relocating that bike cage closer to Davis. And, and that, um, uh, if you, if you're out there, there, there's op some open space in front of the school there, but putting it there so they don't have to go up across the intersection they can go up to the and cross there but that's on their timeline and uh funding wise so uh that that's something we we the the, the team the subcommittee did express and there are a couple things that came out subsequent to the first meetings that they may be able to do some of these changes but they're more open to it before it was when we first uh way back even before per commissioner Ng, that was one of the suggestions and they said, yeah, we're, we're, we can't move it. And then, or we can't even align our uh, roadway with Clarice, but subsequently they're able, they're more open to it. I'll just say that. I don't want to put them that they're doing it anytime soon, but yeah, that's something that that's encouraging because again, if you don't have the foot kids going riding all the way up there, they don't have to cross on Casada, and then you get them cross right where we want all the pedestrians to cross. And there's, I mean, that means that crosswalk's going to be busy. And that may cut down folks from driving it because again, they're going to go down Clarice and they're not going to, because they're not going to be able to go northbound on Casada. But again, that's as we go through it, uh, some of the tweaks, again, we're still phasing it and looking at it and we'll be monitoring, but we have to kind of let it ride its own a little bit because, you know, obviously BPD staff, yeah, every school will want them out there just like they are, but that's not just possible. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think everyone touched on everything. I visited the site with you before it was all implemented, uh, Commissioner Ng, and that was my first real look at it. It's kind of an awkward intersection. Yeah. And tight streets. It's a miracle of how some of these, uh... <laughs> like, let's put a school right here in the middle of this awkward intersection. Okay. Uh, okay. So... Sorry. You're going to get a couple more. Yeah. Yeah. California drive bike facility project. Uh, it's mostly in, I mean, the bollards are in, everything's been striped. The roadway has been resurfaced. Uh, we've been monitoring some feedback from it and a lot of it's yeah, definitely plus and that a lot of it negative as well. It's a balance. We're, always, we're still asking folks be patient uh, when it, once people start getting used to it again, but some of the things that we hit on, uh, there is a nice facility. We do see some folks using it. I've used it myself now. Um, and if you've walked it or, or drive driven it, it, it is much slower. You don't have folks trying to pass someone else in the other lane. And we'll try to address some of the other things as we're watching some of the queuing and things like that. But, uh, so, so far so good. And we may be back here. We've, I've gotten some words on, again, we noticed the area of, folks along Broadway about the parking restrictions and we didn't get in. So we kind of waited, we, we implemented no overnight parking, but then we didn't put in a, a time restriction. So some folks expressing that they may want that, but we'll, we'll see as that comes about, that may be something that comes out, but uh, so far it, 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 the project is what it is. Uh, it's, it's achieved some of the goals and we're hoping that as time goes on, it more cycle shoes and then that'll hit that other bump. Questions on that? And the last last one, oops, okay. The last one is the Highland Parking Garage is something uh, uh, Vice Chair Rebel has asked about. And I know uh, Commissioner Martos has been always been checking out. It, it's pretty good now. We've got the four levels. Before it was like only the first two levels were full. Four levels are pretty full. Up top, not too many folks are parking except maybe by the entrances. And uh, yeah, and and then on weekends it ramps up even a little bit more. So I, I haven't I haven't been in there looking at. It. I've just looked at some of the data, 
and uh, it's pretty well utilized, but at least we still have some capacity. I mean, at e each floor, except for the first one, the first one's pretty full, even with even with the EV chargers, a lot of those are taken and even the uh, all those spaces. But uh, yeah, pretty much each level is at least 80%, 90% full up until you get to the very top and then it's pretty wide open. But uh, yeah, it's good to see that because at one point it looked like, yeah, Commissioner Martos and I would be there like, oof. But uh, no, it's people are using it, so that's a good sign. And with that, that's it. Any question, any Commissioner? Ray? Yeah, through the chair. So, I agree. I think it's great, and it, I certainly use that Highland Garage <clears throat> numerous times. And pretty much every time I go down to downtown now, that's beautiful. But that also poses a problem. So, and, and it's something I've mentioned in passing, but I, I kind of want to say in this form as well. But the lighting on that southeast corner where the garage resides is horrific and every time i try to cross that street at nighttime it's really dicey and so multiple times you know i'm there with my kids almost got hit cars just don't see you because there's no direct lighting coming from the corner that howard um howard howard yeah yeah so that corner just it's the lighting is really really bad i don't know what needs i mean i don't know if there's just no capacity to put something there on that corner or not. But I mean, and again, you know, if it's being more popularly used, now you got the time change. Now it's going to be darker earlier. And so you got really, really dark hours out there. And so I think we really want to maybe take a look at that because it's, it's, it's dicey. It's the best way I can put it. Yeah. I concur with that. Martos? Concur. Commissioner? Anything? Oh, um, No, um, okay. Is this not future agenda items? Not yet. No. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we're going to move on to item 7D, police department reports. Sergeant Roberts. Good evening. Um, so I have uh, two months to report back. Um, so I'm going to give my summary of each, each month separately, which will include some highlights and then um, I'll take questions on specific collisions after that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, for the month of September, uh, there were 18 collisions to report. Uh, collisions that occurred on private property again and hit and runs where no cause could be determined or caused by um, criminal matters were filtered out of this report. Um, in this month, uh, 14 collisions were with another motor vehicle. We had three collisions with a parked motor vehicle and one bicycle collision. Uh, most common collision factors uh, included uh, primarily right-of-way violations and turning movements. Um, on the list of collisions, there's one um, fourth from the top uh, as a hillside and Balboa collision, the vehicle versus vehicle. Excuse me. Uh, there was a vehicle traveling southbound on Balboa and came to stop at hillside. Um, that vehicle proceeded then to make a right turn onto Hillside in front of another vehicle that was already approaching westbound on Hillside. Um, didn't see the vehicle coming, uh, and there were no injuries reported for that collision. Uh, third from the bottom, that's the um, vehicle bit bicycle collision that occurred um, in the month of September. Uh, there was a vehicle traveling southbound on California Drive and approaching uh, Broadway. Um, that vehicle began to make a right turn into the driveway of the gas station uh, there at the corner. Um, however, was turning in front of a bicyclist that was also traveling um, parallel southbound on California Drive. Um, it was a report of minor injuries uh, scraped to the bicyclist. And then uh, moving on to November, I'm mean, excuse me, the month of October, there were 17 collisions in this report. And um, among those, there were eight collisions involving with another vehicle, four with parked vehicles, one with a fixed object, and we had one collision with bicyclists and three pedestrian-related collisions. Um, again, common collision factors this month um, also were right of way and unsafe turning movements. <clears throat> Looking at the list, uh, the top collision is a um, vehicle-bicycle collision the sole bicycle-related collision for the month. 
Uh, this was regarding a vehicle that was traveling westbound on Truesdale at Murchison. Um, excuse me, I think that's incorrect. I believe there's a um, bicyclist on California Drive. That's, uh, that's yes, okay. Vehicle westbound on Truesdale, um, and it was approaching California Drive. Um, the vehicle um, came to a stop at the stop sign and began to turn right southbound California Drive. However, there was also uh, the bicyclist was traveling southbound already on California Drive through that intersection. Mm. Um, this was a late reported collision. Um, the situation was stabilized at the time of the incident and then the bicyclist had um, complained of pain and sought treatment and discovered there was a, a, a fracture so it got categorized as a major injury collision um second one from the top on that list is a vehicle pedestrian uh, this was a vehicle that was turning right um, from southbound cappuccinos this is uh right off of broadway uh, the vehicle was on cappuccino southbound turning right onto westbound Broadway. Uh, vehicle failed to negotiate the turn safely, ended up driving up onto the curb and ultimately collided with some greener, greenery at the corner. Um, there was a pedestrian present who was grazed and um, reported uh, minor abrasions to an arm. And then about halfway down, we have the other, uh, the second vehicle pedestrian collision uh, this month. Uh, this was along the 200 block of East Lane, um, so east of the train tracks and the uh, railroad crossing nearby. Um, a pedestrian walked backwards into the lane of traffic from between parked vehicles, and there was a vehicle passing by. The pedestrian walked into the side of the passing vehicle. Um, so that was a pedestrian that was found at fault for not uh, entering the roadway safely. And then um, finally, uh, the last vehicle pedestrian collision for the month of October was the incident that occurred in the middle of the 1600 block of Albemarle Way. This is between Davis Drive and Ray Drive. Um, this particular incident, uh, vehicle was traveling southbound on Albemarle Way. Um, there was also a pedestrian walking southbound along the um, east sidewalk. Um, the pedestrian crossed mid-block um, from east to west. Uh, we believe uh, a factor of the collision was um, the sun in the morning was obscuring the driver's view. The pedestrian was struck um, and it caused abrasions, possible loss of consciousness um, at the time of the collision. And uh, that concludes the uh, collisions I've selected. Questions? Yes. Commissioners? Um, Sergeant, the incident that happened near BIS where a person was hit, is that um, under investigation? Is that why it's not here? Uh, which one? Help me. <laughs> Isn't that Albemarle? That's, uh, that, is that, that the Albemarle Marl. that where it was? Okay. Yeah, that's Albemarle. Okay. I thought it was on Davis or something. Was, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Then um, you covered it. Awesome. Thank you. I, I didn't understand where the Howard and East Lane pedestrian hit was. Like, where is East Lane at Howard? That's where the candy store and the okay, the, the yeah, the, dealership. Yeah, between Burlingame Avenue and Howard, Howard there, and the depot. That depot thing, yeah. right? Okay, and so what happened there? I didn't quite. There was a pedestrian at the side of the road. Um, was washing a car and accidentally backed out into the roadway while the car was passing. Oh, so he was washing his car, like in a parking place? Uh, I, I believe it had, yes, yes. Interesting. I think it's like, uh, it's like the, it's the east Find side of the tracks, the right? Correct. Finding one of the dealerships. But yeah, there's the auto sure. repair shops there, you know, just on the east side of the tracks. On the east side of the track? Yeah. Oh, okay. So from Howard, Makes sense. yeah, He's and that's where all those little auto repair shops are. Yeah, I think. So we right? had yeah. auto repair, I think, is there? Is that East Lane? So we had three <laughs> pedestrians hit last month. Yeah. Huh. Were besides the Albemarle Ray Drive, were there any other 
minors involved in no. September or October? No. Of the pedestrians? No. No. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Rain, nothing? Okay. Um, I'm good. So let's uh, move on. Well, I'm not doing public comment. Uh, let's move on to the next item is uh, item uh, 7E, TSP Fair <clears throat> and Commissioner Communication. Any uh, communications, any chair or commissioners want to express? I don't have any myself. Can we comment about that email where we all got or not? About uh, Hillside Drive and El Camino. I think that would go under communications. Would that fall under a communication? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is that? Yeah. Was, that was 1503. Yeah. But we can't, comment. we can't comment on it. We can't comment on it's it. It's on an agenda. So I don't... Right. We can't right? comment on it. Correct. We can only share our communication. We can just say that this is what's sent in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we received. We re received. They'll report it and then. An email. email. Yeah. Right. About 1503. Huh? Uh, I mean, there. through the vice chair. St staff's working on that. Obviously, we're aware of it. So we're working with BPD. This one. Pardon me? We're working with B uh, uh, Sergeant Roberts and myself. We're working on this one. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Good. It's good to know. Okay. Committee reports, item 8A, public <laughs> comment related to committee reports. Seeing none here, anything online? Thank you. 8B, Burlingame Avenue Pedestrian Safety Improvements. Commissioner Lee. Um, I'm just wondering if Mr. Wong had any updates on that. We did walk the avenue together. Anything going on with that? Through the vice chair, yes. Uh, We've got some new staff trying to break them in on some of this, and so they're trying to draft it up. So hopefully it's something we can next month be able to show everyone else what we've worked on and then uh, try to get some of those implemented. Okay, so, great. Yeah, that's still the plan again, trying to break new folks in. Okay. Uh, item 8C. I'm not skipping, right? Yeah, 8C. BIS School Safety Study, Chair Israelit and Commissioner Ng. Um, I, I think we already gave the update. Um, yeah. the, the one follow-up, uh, Annie, I don't know if you had sent the new chief business official the circulation plan. Ooh, my bad. Okay. You're correct. Just tack that on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. And item 8D, US 101 Bicycle and Pedestrian Connectivity. Uh, that's Commissioner Lee and myself. And I think this is where we disband the committee. I believe so. Which we would intended to do in June, which is why I could hardly remember what's on the report. <laughs> so, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, would you disband it until after you discuss with staff and then more st stuff happens? I, I think the committee, because we were supposed to, uh, the committee was actually intended to end in June with the final report. That's what we said with uh, the city attorney. And uh, I don't think, you know, the, the committee report exists. It has a life of its own. The committee <clears throat> need to continue on. Okay. Yeah. Am I accurate with that, Andy? Um, I believe so. But it's, it, as I recall, when we had, we went through that session at the beginning of the year with uh, the city attorney's office, the assistant. It, it was about uh, having a termination, but we've also carried it on for a few months. I, I'm not, if we, we should discuss for next month and maybe next month we'll we'll cancel it just so we can yeah okay a little cross i or what cross t's dot i's all right so i mean you wouldn't want to disband it and then create I'm under the creek. i hear you i hear where you're going with it i i i'm just you know remember i remember very clearly explaining to uh the assistant city attorney that this was this was the the uh the task was to create the report. The report, not the action. Submit the report, right, exactly. Got it. Okay. Thank you. No worries. No, thank you. I, I some excellent questions, actually. Um, okay, so that's uh, it for item eight. Item nine, future agenda items. Commissioner Lee, I think you said you had I something. I did have a couple. Um, I would like to get an update on the California Oak Grove Paraland 
signalization traffic safety plan going on for that intersection. Um, and then update on the Carmelina Paloma stop sign would be great. And I think with um, we were gonna consider forming a Broadway subcommittee. And I thought it was gonna be on this agenda, but maybe next month. Uh, through the vice chair, I think we need to have a, the chair for, form the subcommittee. So, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes because we're getting pretty close to, you know, at the end, uh, yeah, where we usually form subcommittees and go through the priority list. So okay. we may just wait till then. So those are mine. Okay. Okay. Martos, nothing? No. Okay. So item 10, adjournment. All those. Uh, move to adjourn. Can I make a motion? Well, I'll move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Ang. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Oh, thanks.